Welcome to the hunt. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Huntcast Podcast. I'm Greg, and that is Doug. All right, and it is Sunday, July. What the hell day is it? July fourteenth. Yeah, July fourteenth. Flying by. Yep, flying by. Halfway, almost, well, yeah. almost halfway. So we're back. We got another special guest with us today, and we're gonna jump right in with him here in a minute. We will go over some IBO scores later on. And if you listened to the podcast last week, we talked about something that touched the nerve for me. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was from the clip that I saw. So okay. yeah. we'll, t- we'll talk about that when we're done with our guest for tonight. And our guest comes from, if you have never heard of Alpen Optics, Vixen Optics, Brasser Optics, you should have. And if you haven't, do some research. But tonight we have Tyler, who is the sales manager from Alpen. And he is with us. He was up at Archery Fest with Jack Coad, a good friend of ours from up in New York State. Yep. Tyler, how you doing, man? Oh, and you know, Greg, it's not too bad. Are you guys? <laughs> we're doing all right. It's a little warm again, but yes, it's, we're, we're it's in the AC. Warm. Yeah, yeah. It's not as warm as it is in Arkansas, though. Right. No. Uh, I think it's like 100 degrees with the humidity. Nice. Nice. Now, yeah. we're, we're like yeah, 80, 82. Yeah, you can keep that. Just leave it there. Yeah. Don't send it our way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So how you guys been? Good, good. Shoot's done, and now, you know, Hunting season right around the corner. We got food plot stuff going on, but let's let's jump in. So you've been with Alpen for how long now? Almost five years now. Okay, cool. So give us. Uh, forgot to put the phone on vibrate. <laughs> give us the rundown. So a lot of people that may have, have never heard of Alpen, like where did they come from? You know, who's Bresser? Who's Vixen? And it all kind of relates to the parent company, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yes, sir. So Alpen originated in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Okay. Which, if no one knows where that is, that is all the way in the south, west, southeast corner of California. Okay. Uh, started by a good a good couple, Vicky and no, it's Tim Gardner. Sorry, Vicky and Tim Gardner, and they did the business real well for twenty years. They started out doing archery tournaments, ASAs, did a lot of journalism stuff with the OWAAs and you know they just they did well for 20 years and they just went to close the shop and it's already before they did and we just acquired the assets and they went gotcha gotcha okay so now the company that acquired it is I'm not mistaken Explorer Scientific correct yes you are correct hold all the cards Okay, gotcha. And the Explorer Scientific is known for their telescopes, correct? Telescopes and mass like National Geographic. Okay, gotcha, okay. gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. So you, how long have you been the sales manager with Alpen? Sales managed for Alpen about two years. Okay. And I originally started out in the telescope world. Nice. Okay. Awesome. So I've been using Alpen for a little while. Doug got a chance to see a lot of the product up at Archery Fest. Yeah. So I've been using Tetons for a while. For those of you hunters, Rick White is a very big part of the Alpen world. So give us a breakdown, because I've got some binoculars, I've got rifle scopes, but you guys are kind of moving all over the place with a whole bunch of stuff now. Yeah, we're, we're trying to keep up with the times, if you will. You know, technology's always moving. Everybody's going into the thermal world. Yeah. So we got some prototypes, the thermal rifle scope. I'm just trying to make sure that they match the fit and the finish. That way we're continuing the legacy that Alpen has always been known for. We got handheld range finders, which you guys have seen. Mm -hmm. Range finding binoculars. We got thermal monoculars. We got some great rifle scopes that are affordable. Yes. And that's, that's the ultimate thing. They all have lifetime warranties. Except like the thermal rifle scope and the thermal monoculars, it's, you know, electronics, it's hard to warrant for a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we definitely do our best. You know, I'm, I'm a very forgiving bird person. If you call me and say, Hey, I dropped my stuff. I'm a little outside the warranty. I was like, all right, send it in. So I can put it on my wall of shame. 
and I'll send you a new one. <laughs> nice. You know, yeah. I just I just want you to be honest. You know, if you can't recover it, if it fell off a ridge or whatever, that's fine. We'll usually just send you a new one. Oh, nice. Um, okay. Binos. You know, we tr- we try to take care of the even the older customers. We try to get them into the new brand. That way, it's in the lifetime warranty as well. Right. You know, we kind of change up the the whole bringing it in or lifetime warranty because usually if we no longer make it you have to get it but i'm starting to implement it you have pair that we no longer make there's something that's in the same magnification that you want right here's an upgraded version if, well, that way you kind of give the customer options like oh, i want to stick with this or Oh, what's all this new fancy stuff that we could get? That's yeah. still <laughs> under that lifetime warranty. Okay, right, gotcha. And it's no questions asked. It sounds like so. Whether you no. drop it from your tree stand or you run it over with your truck, it it don't matter. Mm-mm, it doesn't matter if the dog gets a hold of. It. Okay, nice. That's nice. nice. Okay. And so, I mean, just from my background with the product, I've been using it now for quite a while. And I do actually have a couple of rifle scopes on our hunting rifles. We actually took the right, the scopes that came on the guns off and put Alpins on in place of them. And one thing for me, and Tyler, you can, you know, a, a allude more to this, but the difference picking up a set of Alpin binoculars or a rifle scope compared to a Vortex, a Bushnell, a Leopold is and Leopold to an extent I'm not gonna reach because people will be getting pissed off. But uh <laughs> so but the the difference of that early light where it's legal shooting hours but it's still kind of dark, the difference is amazing compared, you know, with the album binocular, especially with like a vortex. That's the probably the easiest company to put them up against. Yeah. How much better you can see in that low light situation. Yeah, I would agree. Now, you know, we also, we, we came out with a newer bino called the Chisos. Greg, I don't know if you've seen them yet, but they're entry-level ED glass. So they still get that low light visibility when you have to do the low or early hunt, so there's a late night hunt. So you can actually afford those ED glass and not have to spend an arm and a leg to get it. Yeah. 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 We're yeah, looking up at those sites. The yeah. 360 reach at something by 50. That's like unheard of. Yeah. Yeah. For ED, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, Tyler, what what makes the difference? So, what is it the glass itself? Is it the coating? What what helps with that, that low light situation? So, it is the coating okay. on that, that, that's ED. Gotcha. You know, the, it helps just, and it, it's it's a little bit of both. It's the coating and the glass. Yeah. So if you look on the Tetons, it's got that that weird magenta Whoa. color. Okay. So it, it, in low light conditions, it brings out the darker hues. Okay. Like the, the darker greens, the browns, the blacks. It literally magnifies it a ton. And that's why you're able to pick up that moose in the tree line, that bear in the tree. Right. You know, that deer that's just sitting along the grass line. Huh. As you can see it. Okay. Uh, now there's the green as or the green colors of the coatings, which those are in the Apex X keys. They're still ED, but they just have the opposite end of bringing up the more natural color. If gotcha. You will. So those coatings actually play a big part, and people are always like, well, "Why are they this color?" It's like, well, now you know the reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I honestly, I, that's why I asked. I never knew the reason. So, yeah, I hear about it. I hear about all the coatings, and you know. This has this coating, this has this coating, but I never really knew what the difference was. So it makes well, total I mean, sense. You get man, you get other companies that use UHD, HD, and all this other stuff. Yeah. It's just E D glass. Okay. Gotcha. So they're they're just giving it a little different name so that it sounds better. Yeah, they're just oh. trying to get the pie is what they're trying to do. Yeah. So now so the the ones that I'm currently running are the Teton ten by forty twos. Mm-hmm. And it says with Abby Prism, and if I pronounce that first word incorrectly, I apologize. What does that mean? So it's an Abbey Koenig Prism. Okay. So if you could sit there and you had x-ray vision, you could look at the prism. Most prisms are in 45 degrees and they bounce light from one to the other, right? So this one is, they're stacked on each other to where it's not bending the light as harshly to get to your eye, and that's why you have so much light transmission. 
Okay. I've seen some light transmission reports that are around 98 to 95. So we, with, we, we put on the box that it has 92% light transmission. Okay. Because that's just... Oh, we lost you a little bit there. We apologize. Tyler has a couple spots where he's losing, we're losing his cell service, yeah. I think. Uh oh. There you go. Well, wherever you're at right there, oh. stay there. <laughs> okay, I won't move. There there you go. Go. Yeah. So now <laughs> I see we're, we're kind of flipping through the website. So this is one that I didn't see at the shoot and I didn't know it was there. So there's an, a bino called the Black Tusk. Yeah. I knew you were going to bring that one up. <laughs> it has the ED glass, it looks like. Yep. Well, ED coating, I guess. It, it, it does have the ED glass. So I only have five of each sizes. Hmm. And I physically can't tell the difference between those and Apex XPs. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And the, AP, yeah, so the APX, AP, Apex XP is kind of like the, the, the top of the line, right? No, the, the actual, the Rainiers are at the top of the, the line. Rainier, yep. Okay, that's right. Yeah. The Rainiers are at the top of the line, then it follows by Tetons, Apex XPs, which the Black Tusks will fit into the Tetons area, but okay. with just a regular BK4 prism. Gotcha. Now, okay, so we so you just mentioned the Rainier, so we're on the Rainier page right now. So 10x42s are currently sold out. The 8x42 is available. This says EDHD. So we know what ED is now. What's the, the HD, that high definition portion of that? Uh, I, I, that's that's where I'm going to have to communicate with individuals and say there there is no HD. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> it's, it's just it's just someone using an AI. If okay. I had to guess, yeah, that's gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, it's just marketing. So just and, marketing. Yep. Then the the laser rangefinder binocular. And we just yes, spoke sir. about those. So those are the. Apex XPs in 10 by 42 and they have mm-hmm. a built-in laser rangefinder. And yes, we got to play with those at the shoot a little bit. Yeah. And those things are awesome. So if you're looking to have that, you know, not have a hundred things in your chest pack, this would be the way to go. Yep. And price wise, I don't think I've ever seen a rangefinding monocular at this inexpensive of a price. Yeah. Right around a thousand bucks or what? something, right? It's right at a thousand bucks. Has an angle compensation, line of sight. You can do yards or meters. We're actually, I'm testing a, a higher magnification than just for craps or gig. Okay. And what's for? I've never. I mean, I've I played with it at the shoot, but I've never actually used one in the field. What is typical max range? If you want, if you have a laser range finding binoculars, what's what's max range on that? You think? Well, now I used it at the archery fest and i was able to range on a second hill there was a deer in the backwoods back there okay he was a little over 800 yards oh wow yeah i mean i'll never okay. shoot that far right right, right 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 okay <laughs> okay not with a bow anyway <laughs> no and, and so i'm reading this here so very similar to your handheld range finder which i have mm-hmm. this has the oled red lettering inside of it so yeah. it's much easier to see than some of the black and yeah. greens that pop up yep yeah I've, i find that black to me is harder to read just like you said greg and the, the ability to control the brightness whether you're in dusk or dawn type areas you can bring it down so it's not just punching you in the face and it's red yeah now the the main difference between the, the little handheld versus the bino version handheld can do a max range of 2500 yards Okay. The binos can do five, five thousand yards. Wow. Okay. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is nuts. Yeah. And I'm assuming now, you can like kind of toggle through it so that you don't have to use the range finding feature, right? You can just kind of glass and can you? Yeah, you just don't press the button. Gotcha. Okay. So if you don't press the button, there's nothing on the screen. Is it just correct? Just looking at typical binos glass. Yeah, gotcha. you're just using regular binos that red as well. Okay. Awesome. Okay, nice. And then, so you mentioned thermal imaging, and we got to see one of the units you had up there. So uh, where are you guys at right now? Because obviously, there, you know, a lot of thermal folks have been around for a little bit. But so we're looking, I see the monoculars here, and you got a 25, a 35, a 54. Yeah. Okay. So, so compare, I know it's hard to compare, but... 
if you had to put them up next to somebody else, who's the the competitor closest to you? Uh, excuse me. Well, you have ATN, you have AGM, you have Pulsar. It all depends on the individual that's going to use it. You know, the the main differences between those three is the digital zoom. That's it. Everything else okay. is internally the same. Okay. Other than the the actual objective size, those are those are going to be the differences. Yeah. They're they're 384 processors and digital zooms are going to be different. Okay. I personally like the 35 because it gives me a nice wide field of view mm-hmm. okay. without giving me complete tunnel vision like the 54 possibly can. Right. But some people like to go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> and the 25, I I assume that's for that's real wide, right? Real wide field of view. Um, so the difference between 25 and the 35, other than the objective and the digital zoom, so 25 is like one and a half times and native. Okay. And the 35 is at two times. So okay. Not much difference. It's just if you want to save a little extra money, yep. go with the 25. Okay. Makes and sense. guys that are buying that, are they, you know, hog shooting or are they shooting coyotes? What, what's, what, what are these, what's the typical hunter who, who's buying these? Well, well, that's the funny thing. I've had farmers purchase up here. Yeah, well, locally, yeah, just to watch their cattle. You know, just from predators. You know, you can do. No one wants to hold a ten pound rifle with yeah. a thermal scope on. Yeah, it's it kills your shoulders. It just kills everything. But with a scanner, it's just easy. Yeah, you know that can have that digital zoom. But you got some predator hunters. There are hog hunters. I've seen Ronnie Adams take it out to when he does neutral rat hunts. Okay. Uh-huh. Yep. So he he took hits. He was out there, got me some good footage on that. So you can use it for just about anything, and you can use it during the day too. Right. Oh, yeah. I do remember you telling me that at the <laughs> shoot that you can you can use it in the daytime. Yeah. Yeah. You you can use it during the day, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Because when everybody thinks of thermal, it's like, oh, it's just straight night. It's like, mm, no, <laughs> no, no. So, it, so during the day, you're still you're just it still works based on heat detection Correct. i assume okay yes it does wow interesting nice. okay now the rifle scopes so i know just for from my end i have a kodiak and i have the 6 to 24 by 50 i have it on my coyote gun so and we also have a one to four similar glass that's used in the binoculars give me give me some breakdown on the on the rifle scopes so the rifle scopes are all going to be fully multi-coated. Okay. Every single one. They're all going to come from the same. There's three major lines. There's the Kodiaks, the Apexes, and then when you get to the Apex XPs, that's where you're jumping. You're getting into the higher-end market. You're getting Japanese glass. That's ED, nice wide field of view. That's But you're jumping into a $1,000 plus tier. Okay. Yeah. But... The, you have the apexes, which are great middle of the road, still fully multi-coated, nice wide field, an eye relief, nice field of view, real comfortable to use. Yeah. You just get a little bit more options if you want to go out, touch something. Okay. And the Kodiaks are great for entry level. You know, if you got someone that just bought a $3,000 rifle, but they don't have $3,000 on a scope, hey, here's a good, here's a good option. Yeah. You know, or if they buy a Walmart gun, a bit. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. They can they can afford something that's not going to literally break their leg after they just spent their arm. Yeah, yep, yeah. And now, all the different levels of scope. Do you have different reticles? So you can get mil dot, you can get BDC, you can they have different reticles for all the lines, or no? So the, the they do have BDCs, mil dots. And that's chip, typically it. I don't have the magazine right in front of me. Yep. But there are a lot of wades, a wide selection to where it's just crosshair reticles. Okay. Versus mill dot with drops in it. Sure. Um, and stuff of that nature. Okay. So, and, and I'm, I'm looking at the Apex XPs and I actually do have the two and a half to 16. And that is a smart dot. Can you explain to the listeners what smart dot is? So smart dot, how... When you get into the higher realm of the of scope market, you have a red dot that's built in, mm-hmm. typically. So you, there's two functions to that. There's a level or brightness adjustment, one through 10, I believe, that's on there, or one through 11. And then you have regular dots on it. The dots are the automatic off. 
Okay. But when you adjust it to a number, which is again, brightness, and you're in the low ready position, the, the red dot's off. But mm-hmm. when you come up to shoot, kicks on. Nice. And it's pretty quick and instantaneous. Yeah. Yep. That's pretty nice. So, so that way, if you accidentally leave it off or leave it in the on position, it's going to time out after 15, 20 seconds. Hmm. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So then obviously they have, we've talked about just about everything except spotting scopes. So the spotting scopes, you have a slew of those very similar to the binoculars as far as your breakdowns. You have the apex, you have a Shasta Ridge, uh, the wings, and the Kodiaks. Kodiak. Yep. Yep. So yep. the Shasta Ridge, if I'm not mistaken, is kind of like the middle of the road with the Kodiaks. Correct. And the wings kind of replace, uh, like, I'm trying to go off the binoculars. So, here. so it goes by Kodiak, wings, Shasta, Apex, and then Apex ED in the spotting scope world. Gotcha, gotcha. So the, so the Kodiaks are the entry level. They have two versions, a straight through and then a 45 degree. Yep. They're both 20, 60, 60. Mm-hmm. Then when you step up to the wings, it's a 20, 60, 80. They only offer one version of that. Yep. And on the Shasta, I believe it is a 20 by six, it's 20, 80 by 100. So it's a bigger, it's a beefier boy. Mm-hmm. And then you have the Apex, which is a 20, 60, 80. All of these are FMC or fully multi-coated. Yep. But when you get into the Apex line, that's where you're getting ED glass. Yep. So you're you're stepping up into that tier. It's got dual focus on it. And then you have the Rainier version, which I don't think we have anymore. Yeah, I was going to say, that one's not listed. It's showing the regular Apex is out of stock, but the yep. XP is still in yeah. stock. Yeah. And very, like that's a perfect example of guys going from the east coast to the west coast are looking for a spotting scope they don't want to break the bank this is 900 bucks it's 20 to 60 by 80 and a lot of guys are like man that thing is huge it, yeah it's kind of big but you're gonna see a whole lot more now if you want something small it's gonna be like just that glassing yeah you know real quick but your your vinyls you don't want to be holding up to your face all day yep You've got that the wings at twenty sixty eighty for five hundred bucks. Yeah, or do a Kodiak yeah, for two fifty. Okay. Yeah, super small, and you can do it in a straight or a forty five. Bang, it's light. I'm sure mm-hmm. pack it easy. Yep. You know. Yep. So, so now I only know a little bit about Bresser and a little bit about Vixen. So, do you is that all part of Alpen or is Alpen part of Bresser Vixen? So. Explore Scientific acquired Vixen two years ago. Okay. So then we inherited the sporting optics side. Bresser is a well-known company over in Germany. Mm-hmm. Everybody that's been around long enough in the industry knows who Bresser is. I am currently trying to phase out Bresser. That way I can just concentrate on Alpen and Vixen. Because Vixen's got a lot of high-end rifle scopes. Yep. Okay. Again, if, if people have been around in the industry long enough, they know who Vixen is. Yes, I remember Vixen. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Bresser is just a three to me is too many. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just trying to concentrate on one now. That yeah. way, when it starts becoming self sufficient, I can move on to the next. Right, right. And I can just check on both. Yeah. And not have to worry about three. Okay. So does Alpen do all of their own manufacturing? Other than we the do. glass, or do you? I mean, you don't make the glass, though, right? Well, I mean, we don't physically make it, but we are the largest manufacturer of glass. Okay, gotcha. So, now I don't know much about the how this industry works, but is it a situation like you know, like flat screen TVs, where there's like only like three panel makers in the world, and everybody kind of grabs from those three manufacturers and just rebrands it? How does it work with the glass? No, I mean, with glass, there's a certain amount of manufacturers that just make glass, but glass is glass. Okay. Now, you, you have a glass manufacturer, then you have a assembling manufacturer that does the body, the assembly, and all that other jazz. Okay. That's where it changes a little bit. Okay. But with, with us, we are, you know, like I said earlier, we're the largest manufacturer of optics, glass, understanding how everything works. Explore Scientific has been around for 15 years itself. Yeah. 
and then Alpin's been around for 30, but still being done by the same manufacturer when the original owners had Alpin. Hmm. Okay. Nice. Well, that's so, something. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're not going away anytime soon. Now, I understand everybody's not buying anything, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things we got to wait until season gets closer. Yeah. Yep. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And so now, along on the Alpin side, there are some accessories that you guys do. One that would be obviously self explanatory is the tripod adapter for a binocular. Okay, that's, you know, most optics companies have something to that effect. But you guys, this came out actually a couple years ago, because three years ago this weekend, I was at the Greenbrier and I used it to film. You guys do the little HD action camera. Hmm. Yep. Recently, you came out with a headlamp, yes? Correct. We have a little headlamp. Now we're revamping the action camera. Okay. Just think of it as a little GoPro. Yep. You know, you can use it as a, just like a regular GoPro, if you will. Okay. Same electronics. I'm just trying to get everything updated on it. That way it's just, you know, a new rendition, not just the same old material. Yeah. Okay. No one likes the same old song and dance. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one that Doug pointed out is you guys actually have a set of carbon tripping poles. Yeah. Yeah, we do. So are you guys making it or is it a, a, a pole manufacturer and they're just you know, putting your name on it? No, we're making it. Hmm. Oh, nice. Nice. Well, actually, they look pretty darn good. They got a whole bunch of baskets. They got the core candles. Yeah. They're definitely neat. They're, they're, they're pretty nice. Like, how did that, I mean, to, I don't know, how, how did that translate? How did you, how does an optics company jump into making trekking poles? How, how does that work? Well, I mean, you got to think of it this way. Alpins is, is not just a hunting optics company. Right. You know, we're we're outdoor lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Outdoor lifestyle covers a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it covers everything from camping, hiking, fishing, you know, all of it. Yeah. And that's and that's where we have to kind of break up from everybody else that just strictly does sporting optics. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, we're, we're it's it's a lifestyle without gotcha. you know, you, you're trying to discover the difference. You know, and, and what you do is a, is a lifestyle and help and help, and help accommodate you in that difference. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. You know. So, for a while, you guys were doing a trail camera, if I mm -hmm. remember. And oh, then, Bresser was. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was Bresser. Yep, that's right. And it, it was, so, it was probably Bresser that had the, the bird feeder that had the video camera in it, right? Correct. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, never saw yeah I do remember that. I remember <laughs> back in the day. That, yeah. We talked about that with them. Yeah, I never saw that. But so what, you know, do you have, is there big sales coming up, getting ready for season, something that, you know, we can draw out there to listeners to get more people. Cause I mean, obviously, you know, we're, we're waiting for some stuff that you guys are doing and getting closer to the season for the shop so that we have it in the shop yep. so people can come and get it, but to get more people, you know, attracted to the Alvin brand. You know, I mean, Greg, what you can do is you, you can, you can always direct them to the website. Worst case scenario. I mean, we can, I'm pretty flexible. Like I can come up to your shop and we can do an event. Yeah. Yep. Kind of do, yep. You know, that'd be fun. That way I, I can support my dealers, show them that they have the backing and support that is Alpen. Right. If they have any questions, you know, that, so it always hurts that when I do a show, no one asks the questions and you get asked later and then you have to call me back. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, let's just, let's just do an event. That way we can do a, a barbecue or a cookout. Yeah. And an, an archery thing. If you have an archery lane in your shop. Oh yeah. Yep. Like we can just, we, we can just do a thing right then and there. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's figure that out. But yeah. Well, so the, ours is generally, in, you know, just obviously we have listeners from all over the country, but will you guys be running any, you know, specials, Direct to consumer as the season gets closer. Um, if they don't have a dealer and they want to buy something, because obviously we're, we're just kind of bouncing through the website here and look at red dots now. And so, you know, Alpen has a lot to offer. And there's so many guys, it's so funny now. Uh, I shoot IBO. So a lot of guys now, you see them dropping hashtag Alpen in their posts mm -hmm. because guys are like, well, why the hell am I haven't I used these for five years? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's nice. It, it, you know, it makes a huge difference, especially in my IBO setting when it's, you know, you're shooting from bright sunlight in a dark tunnel, 
with the binoculars, you can definitely 100% see everything. Yeah. So I get why a lot of these guys are switching to it. So it's nice to see it. And we just want to drag some more of the, uh, the civilian type, as they say, yeah, right. uh, in, into buying them. You know, if, if you got people that call you, Greg, or get a hold of you, or you can give them my number or email that we can get them set up, you know, just direct consumer, because we have our own warehouse that carries inventory. Right. Okay. So, you know, they can get a hold of me, then go to the website. You know, if they're wanting some kind of deal, we, we do support military because I'm ex military as well, Very law nice. enforcement. What, what branch were you in? The Army. Very nice. Very nice. I didn't know that. I saw the hunt up the shirt at the shoot, but I didn't ask any questions. <laughs> uh, it's because you were a little busy. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, were, you were a tid busy. But, uh, you know, but no, that's cool. Yeah. So then, are you, do you deal with any kind of national retailers for, you know, any of the the major retailers, you know, throughout the country? Or are you kind of just kind of sell local shops and website kind of deal? Oh, well, right now, I mean, everybody would love to get into the big retail stores, but they're extremely hard to get into. Yeah. Huh? You know, I'm I'm trying to get my foot in, into other doors. So, I mean, we got local shops that are local. Yeah. We support all the smaller mom pop shops. Okay. Yeah. And then that's that's the bread and butter is the mom and pop shop. Yeah. Okay. It really is. Yeah. You know, you can take care of them a whole lot better than the bigger mass market guys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, because they're they're always trying to shake and deal. That's yep. all they're trying to do. <laughs> you know. Absolutely. You know, would, and you can have an actual personal relationship with smaller mom and pop shops. Yes, no doubt about it. And that's the attraction. You know, that's the attraction to the mom and pop shop. So. It is. It yeah. really is. Yeah. You're not having to deal with a suit all the time. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. All right. Cool. What else we got, Greg? So other than that, so to get to see Alpen Optics, if you don't have a dealer near you, best thing to do, go to alpenoptics.com. They also have a Facebook page, Instagram page. I believe, Tyler, you said you were working on some YouTube stuff. Yep. Uh, and uh, we, got a, we got a wonderful TikTok now. Oh, oh boy, boy. He's oh still talking it up. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and if you have ever listened to Rick White, you can check, excuse me, check out Rick White and you can see some of the interviews he's done with because there's another Pennsylvania boy that runs Alpen Product, Buller. Mm-hmm. And he's been on there. I've been on there. And Nick is a great guy. And he has a whole bunch of different guests. But he goes over a lot of the products. So if there's something very specific you were looking to get an answer to, Rick, you probably has done a video on it at some point. And then you can call us at the shop, High Times Archery. And we can either help you out and order it. Or we can get you in touch with Tyler so that you can order it. Yep. What else? What else? I think. Well, what else we've got, we, are, we are fixed to do a show in deer acid oh deer acid classic <laughs> so we're, we're going to deer acid classic so if there's anybody close to where deer acid is at in ohio what? me and rick will be there okay awesome awesome cool so check them out and what are the dates for deer acid do you remember august 2nd and 3rd i okay. believe so yeah 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 i think it's usually a friday saturday sunday i know friday is like a concert deal but yeah so it'll you know head up there if you've never been to deer acid it's it's an interesting time, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> Been there a couple of two tree, but uh, it's a fun show, and they always have bands and good stuff going on. So check them out. They'll have obviously a booth there, and Tyler and Rick. Tyler would be the younger of the two. <laughs> Nothing against you, Rick. Just yeah. you know the big difference. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. No, but check them out. You know they. You guys did pretty decent archery fest so yeah i know great show so i know my brother-in-law did buy a pair of the binoculars with the range finder inside of them and he really likes them mm-hmm. yeah so my wife got him downs because i had eight by 42 tetons <laughs> and i got new teton 10 by 42 so she got the old ones <laughs> But see, it's all still supported by that lifetime warranty. That's right. Yeah. And Jack was making fun of me. He's like, why didn't you give her those ones? Those are the used ones. I'm like, because yeah, I wanted the 10 by 42s. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, but no, definitely check them out, guys. If you've never seen Alpenoptics, you've never had them in your hand, find a local dealer. 
Yep. If not, if you're local to the shop, I don't have our inventory yet. Tyler is putting some packages together and we will have them soon, but I always have mine at the shop. So you can come in and play with them, check them out, see, look, yeah, touch feel. And then we can always special order something if you need them quicker than later. So, well, Greg, let's let me ask you a question. Uh huh. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the other foot now. So you use the Tetons. Yes. On the 10 by 42s. What do you like about them as a user? So the fact, number one of the 10 by 42, there's a lot of 10 by 42s that are very heavy. These are not heavy. They fit in all of my chest packs or my vinyl harnesses. So I've used everything from marsupial to FHF gear. And currently, because of my connection with Elevation, I'm running Elevation vinyl harnesses, and they fit in there perfectly. I don't ever have to worry about them wiggling around, falling out. Mm. The fact that the eye cups are silent when you turn them up and down, super easy to, you know, clear up or zoom or whatever you're looking to do. I literally, Jack was laughing at me because when I did give my wife the old binoculars, I mean, to me, they weren't filthy, but she's looking at them and it looks like they've been sitting in a pile of dust for you know, three years, Yeah, but I don't put my lens caps on. Really? And well, I've never had a problem. Well, on a chest pack, you wouldn't. Right. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I don't even climb up and down trees and whatnot. Yeah. So there's all kinds of crap getting in there. Yeah, yeah. I've never had a problem seeing through them. And I mean, when Jack cleaned them, there was an inch of dirt on the eyepieces. <laughs> but yeah, so they're just, they're clear. I can see everything. I don't ever have to like try to squint to, to get a, a view. And I've had to do that with other binoculars, including very high end binoculars. So that's, you know, we kind of, I'm trying to think we've been, or I've been using Alpen for at least eight years <laughs> back when we started rack and rod back when we had the TV show. So that's how long ago it was. Yeah. Now what is the, what now you say you do a bunch of ASA shoots. What are you noticing when you're using the Alpen gear? What gives you, what do you think gives you the advantage? The fact that shoots? I can see in the dark. So it's IBO, but yeah, the fact that I can see rings in the dark through my binoculars, because there's a, like IBO, man, they set up some serious, you know, targets that are very well hidden and yeah. very well in the shadows. Yeah. ASA is a lot more in the open. So okay. yeah, it might be dark, but not like what we deal with at IBO. Yeah. And I can definitely pick out the rings in my binoculars, no problem. So it gives me at least the ability no, if I make the right judgment number, I'll hit it. But I I don't have to guess what to aim at. I can see the rings give myself the advantage of finding a spot, a chunk of foam missing, something that when I pull those binoculars down, I already know my eyes are glued to where I need to be shooting. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So... Well, Tyler, we definitely appreciate you coming on, and we will share a link appreciate it. Yep. with our YouTube version of the podcast. We'll share it on Facebook and Instagram. I don't think Doug's going to TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a TikTok kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. But we definitely appreciate you having it coming on, man, and uh, you know, we, we will do whatever we can to, to give you guys the support you need Yeah, with binoculars, you know, helping people get into the right binocular yeah so we'll uh we look forward to it and we're, we're excited about getting them into the shop you know get ready for the season but we have a topic that we have to cover to finish up our <laughs> evening <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen once again tyler from alpen optics and make sure you check them out alpenoptics.com check yeah. them out on instagram facebook tiktok youtube have any questions about them, give us a call at the shop. Reach out to us in an email, huntcastpodcast at gmail. And we'd be happy to answer whatever we can for you. Yep. Uh, if not, we will get you in touch with Tyler and we'll go from there. So, yeah. Tyler, we we'll appreciate it again. Yeah, thanks a lot. Good talking yeah, to you. And, uh, on, guys. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be in touch soon. Talk to you soon. All right. Y'all take care. Later. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, big, big shout out once again to Tyler from Alpen. He, uh, was uh, generous enough to give us uh, some time on a Sunday evening. But we're going to jump into a couple things. So first, real quick, we're going to burn through the third jewel of IBO. No, I was not there. It was in Ohio. I am obviously sitting in Pennsylvania. <laughs> uh, so there was a whole bunch of movement on the pro scores. So the first we're going to touch on is pro 
Males, Levi Morgan comes out on top hmm. with a 422. So he combined, that doesn't sound right. Oh, shoot off score, sorry. I'm like, how the heck did he do that? But yeah, so he won. Dan McCarthy came in second. Didn't Levi win last week? Believe, well, that was ASA. Oh, was Two it? Two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, so the last IBO was... He was on a podium, I believe. Well, yeah, he came in second okay. in Pennsylvania. Okay. McCarthy won in Pennsylvania with like a ridiculous score. Yeah. And that's when his wife won as well. Then they win yes. together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Third place in male pro was Joseph Goza. And Jacob Slezar was right there, man. He came in fourth. So let's see. We'll go over to senior pro. Senior pro. Ken Lance. I can't. No, that's that's why. That's not semi pro. That's or senior pro. That's semi pro. Yeah. Uh, Ken Lance, Brad Thays, and Brandon Wrights. Milt Bombarger, who's a Pennsylvania boy out of Western PA, came in fifth. I did see his post. So that would have been my class. Let's see where I would have fallen. <laughs> not that I really want to know. Oh, yeah, I would have got smoked on that one. Those guys are shooting good this week. Yeah. All right. So let's find senior pro now that I looked at the wrong one. Pro seniors, that's why they have backwards. Yeah, it's backwards. Your buddy came in first. Did he? Yeah. Hammer time. Hammer time. <laughs> so Timmy G takes first. Tony Tazza in second. Jeff Kirkland in third. Let's see here. Women. Man, they put this stuff all over the place. Pro female. There we go. Pro female. Car Kelly. Okay. Our girl from Luma. Coming up. Big score, too. Nice. 401. Shoot off score, 53. So, yeah, nice. that's pretty good. good. Yeah. Erin McGladdery. I swear, I really, really want her to say something to me and see if she has an <laughs> Irish accent. I really do. <laughs> Sharon Wallace, nice, came in third. Emily came in fourth. So, okay. Might have had a little tough time at the course this weekend. Yeah. Not a big deal. Uh, let's see. Who did I miss? Trying to find something specific. Where is it? There it is. I just, I want to see something. Okay, so I th- have I told you about Claire before? Yes. Okay, so Claire is from Michigan. Her parents are awesome. Yeah, her mom shoots on the Matthews team. They shoot for gas, and literally, I'm pretty sure almost every single event she's been to this year, she's won. Yeah. She did come in second this weekend. So okay. Still on the podium, but man, this girl can just shoot. <laughs> I just wanted to see where she was at. Yeah. But, okay, so IBO scores are done. Now right. oh, we're going to touch on Doug and I had our homework to do this week. <laughs> I will be up front. I made a, an, an assumption last week because of a clip that I saw. And I might have went up a little too far. <laughs> it's, it's okay, it happens. Yeah. But so you got to watch the podcast. I did. Yeah, I checked it out. And uh, so the podcast that we're talking about is Go Hunt. It it was a myth, what do they call it MythBusters? Yes. So yeah, MythBusters. It was it was, you know, kind of after the TV show. They actually brought up the TV show in the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. But one of the things that was like the very first thing they talked about in a myth was the six and a half Creedmoor cartridge. Yeah. And Brady was his name, correct? The tall yes. skinny guy in the middle. Yeah. Yep. So Brady, he with the beard, I think. Yeah, longer hair. Yeah. 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 So, and this is the first time I've actually seen that podcast. Yeah, that was the first time I ever saw I, it. So, they, they, they seem like cool guys. It's yeah. a very kind of laid back, kind of like us, you know, just kind of yeah. two guys just BSing together. Uh-huh. And, you know, well, the three of them, but yeah, because I think um, the guy on the right side of the table yeah. is actually the owner of Go Hunt. Oh, maybe. I'm, I'm almost positive it okay. is. Okay. I don't remember the, the guy to the left. I don't remember what his name was. I don't remember his name. Yeah. I can see his face. Yeah, they, they work. They all work with Gohan. Yeah. So, but yeah, very you know, very informal and just kind of three mm-hmm. guys sitting around BS and yep. Very, it was good. It was it was you know it was yeah, entertaining. I, so yeah, I mean it was, it was like us. You know, we, we curse every once in a while. It's not like a, a huge deal. Yeah. yeah. Even so, when this all came up, and they said that we we're going to bust some myths. The guy that was on the left says, "Well, you know." I don't want to go too quick here because Brady will get fired up real fast. The, <laughs> the guy on the right was like, oh, just go right at him. And, yeah. you know, yeah. he, he's going to boil over. Yeah. But, but yeah, so they get into the, the deal. And what I saw in the clip, and this is the downfall of AI yeah. and ChatGPT and all these other things that just pull stuff out of videos. Because it was literally like a 
15 second clip and yeah. all i heard was six and a half creed more suck you're skinny and yeah. that's why you shoot it there was no <laughs> other so it, it aggravated me yeah kind of um, struck a nerve yeah so doug and i did watch the episode he yeah. watched it and i watched it by myself we were you know watching it together so that we can for our own opinion yeah so but you know getting back to ai it, that's that's it it worked oh yeah 100 percent. because it, it got you drawn in uh-huh. and got you fired up yep and so mission yeah, now i want to see what those idiots talking <laughs> yes, about little so, bastard yeah mission accomplished yeah. it works so all right so obviously they're talking about the six and a half the <clears throat> the way that it was brought up yeah was okay you're on an elk hunt you're going to shoot a six and a half creep more yeah now doug and i both know this there are a lot of people from the east that go west that will shoot a six and a half creep more yes because that's what they read on the internet yes is it a flat shooting bullet yes yes is it something that you want to take a shot at like 800 yards on an elk. No. No. <laughs> and so the the little clip that I saw was, you know, him kind of telling people like, why would I just take that? I'll take what I normally shoot. But right. they didn't have that part in there. Yeah. So Brady, if you're listening, I doubt he is. Um, but if you're listening, I apologize for jumping down your throat last week. Yeah. So... We did, we did a little research, Doug and I both did a little research because some of the numbers that they came out with was like, that just doesn't seem right. Like we own a six and a half, my wife shoots it for deer and she shoots a 140 grain bullet. And I would have no doubt in my mind that at 300 yards, she can drop a deer in its tracks. Yeah. So you, you talk about the numbers you found. What what did we come up with? So the numbers I found, and I, I just did a comparison same manufacturer. Mm-hmm. I believe it was a Barnes. I was looking at the Barnes Vortex, I believe. So I just looked at it and it, I looked at the Creedmoor. Then I jumped to a 270 and then I went to the 308, mm-hmm. which is what I shoot. Mm-hmm. So now basing it on a 200 yard zero. Oh, and wait, before you jump. Yeah. So according to what they found was that at. S- oh, sorry, we got. <laughs> We got the uh, audience outside the window here. Yeah. A couple of deer walking by. See, that one, the spot's just about gone on that one. Yep. You can just fade and there we go. <laughs> so they said that uh, you don't want to shoot this out of the animal if the f- a cubic energy, or not the cubic energy, the f- uh, foot pounds of torque yeah. energy, velo- you know, the velocity. Foot pounds of energy, yeah. Is below 1600. Right. So no, go ahead. So, so which, I mean, the ones that I found, and again, I used, I just went with the Barnes Vortex, which is a copper bullet. Mm-hmm. That's actually what I shot my elk with. <laughs> oh, how to do it in there, how to throw it in there. Both yeah. of them. <laughs> and it, it works great. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so this one at 200 yard zero, mm-hmm. 120 grain bullet. Mm-hmm. It's shooting at 2470 feet per second. Mm-hmm. And sixteen twenty six foot pounds of energy. To, when you jump, which, which that falls into that criteria. So he said you need have to have a minimum right. of sixteen hundred mm-hmm. foot pounds, which this does. Or, yeah, you don't want to be any less than that, right? Is what he said. Yeah. Okay. Which I kind of agree with. Yeah. But just as a comparison, when you jump to a two seventy, mm-hmm. you know now you're at twenty seven twenty seven mm-hmm. feet per second. So you're three hundred feet per second faster right the energy goes from 16 uh yeah 1626 for the creedmoor and it drops down to 2131 so i'm sorry jumps up to 2131 so that's almost 500 Mm -hmm. 500 foot pounds so sure which is quite a bit yeah Um, no i mean in my head obviously similar to what he was thinking is you know 270 is not going to be the bullet i take for an elk yeah and that that's not my choice either. Right. Yeah. No, 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 for sure. But it doesn't meet the criteria. Yes. But obviously now that's a 270. So that base number might be different because of the 270. Yeah. And honestly, the, the, the grain, the, the size of the bullet is pretty close. Yeah. The, the Craigmore was 120 grains and the 270 is 129. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It's, it's real close. So the part, so after we watched it and I got to see the whole clip, so what, 
aggravated me a little bit was I obviously Doug and I went on to dig up some numbers and go, okay, let's see like what this really is. Yeah. So the very first, the numbers that they gave you from zero to 500 yards on a Creedmoor um, that he pulled up was the very, very first one that you can possibly look at ammo.com. Yeah. And it was an Aguila 140 grain full metal jacket boat tail. And so the specs that he had at 100 yards, it was 2,429 feet a second with 1,834 foot pounds of torque. At 500 yards, it was 1,811 feet a second and 1,019 foot pounds of torque. Yeah. So obviously, Doug already found the one that was better than that. And yeah. And that's what kind of after I watched it and then we went back through and I'm like, well, all he did was literally just put up a page and went, yeah. okay, this is it. Yep. So the one that I went and looked at is, because they were using 140 grain, I found a Hornaday in 147. And like theirs at 400 yards was already well below the 1600. The 300 was well below the 1600. The 200 was five feet below the 1600. Yeah. The horn day I found was at 300, 1761 foot pounds of torque at 2,323 feet a second. Yeah. So then Brady had mentioned he shoots a, 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 a rum. Yeah. Which he, it's like, man, just say Remington Ultra, man. It's not that hard. You don't have to abbreviate it. Yeah. So I pulled up what he's shooting. Now, granted, I don't know if this is the bullet he's shooting, but let, I'm going to boast this off of 200 yards. And pull up your 308 that you found. Okay. So at 200 yards, that's where they zeroed this particular gun in a REM Ultra. Yep. The Creedmoor was zeroed at 200. Yep. And that 308 was probably zeroed 300. 200. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, so his rum <laughs> was shooting 2,000, well, it could be shooting 2,627 feet a second. With 3,371 foot pounds of torque. Wow. Not growing it. It's a 30 grain bullet. I mean, right. 30, it's a yeah. caliber bullet. So, yeah. Well, what's the what's the grain on that? That is a 220 grain. Wow. Okay. That that's a that's a big chunk. Yeah. Definitely moving real fast. Now, <laughs> the 308 that you had. Yep. 308 is at 2490 feet per second. Okay. And 2,062 feet. Okay, so now here's uh, this is super funny, energy, so. right? So this is super funny. Two hundred yards. Yep. Right. So six and a half degree more. Here's the same horn today that I found. Yep. At two hundred yards, two thousand four hundred and forty three feet a second. Okay. Well, about thirty feet a second off, right? Yep. Fifty actually. Yeah. Fifty. Close. Yeah. yeah. Foot pounds of torque or foot pounds of energy. One thousand nine hundred and forty eight. Okay. So you're all, you're a hundred. Mm-hmm. Basically, 110 or 115 right. foot pounds. Yeah. So, do I get what they were saying? Absolutely. Yeah. And though not my first choice to go take on an elk hunt. No. Would I recommend shooting an elk at 500 yards with it? Probably not. No. Unless you can, you are just one hell of a shot, and you can put one through his eyeball. I I wouldn't I wouldn't chance it. No. But. Can you take it and make an ethical shot? Yeah, at three hundred yards. I think so. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'm more than one hundred percent in the book. Yeah, and listen, there's thousands of guys that kill elk every single year with it. Mm-hmm. It's not my choice. No, I wouldn't do no. it. But, no. but I, I, you know, it was the the way. Like he almost was like bashing the caliber. Yeah, that's what like yeah. aggravated me. Well, you know what. <laughs> The guys out west, they typically do that. Mm -hmm. That's like the running joke now. Oh, for sure. So, yeah, the guys out west don't particularly like the the round. The, you know, the outfitters and the guides, they kind of, if someone walks in a camp with one, they kind of, you know, their eyebrows go. Yeah, he's he's shooting shooting on pretty good. I'm not too worried about it. And that's just the thing. I'd rather have a guy that has a 6'5 Creedmoor Mm -hmm. that, shoots the thing lights out yep. and has been shooting it for years mm-hmm. as opposed to some you know yahoo who goes out there with his you know his rum mm-hmm. that he just bought at the shop what? he put three rounds through it and he's not proficient the shoulder is still black and blue exactly yeah so 
Yeah, I'd rather have the guy who's proficient with it. Yeah. As opposed to the, the bigger gun that the guy can't shoot. Yeah, so, exactly. Exactly. Uh, and, and I'm a 308 guy all the way. And I actually email money in. So everybody talks about how flat the six and a half is. Yeah. You know, how flat it shoots, how flat it shoots. It doesn't shoot flat. Yes. A 260 Remington shoots much flatter. Yeah. But the problem is I wouldn't shoot that at a deer past <laughs> 200 yards. Yeah. You know, but that's the downfall of these guys like out west they don't come out east we go out there so like yeah. it's a big jump to them yeah but they're the same guys that shoot thousand great arrows <laughs> yeah it, it's in the neapolitan complex and napoleon complex <laughs> i think you know but well i i don't know so that was we we, we had to dig into that yeah because after last week i was real upset about it but you know and like i said it's it'll do it yeah not necessarily my choice. No, I mean, no. you know, you can, but you have to know what the gun can do. Yes. that's the thing. Yes, so not my choice. Obviously, Doug's not. That's not his choice. I'm a 308 guy. It worst case when I take a 300 one mag or something. Sure, yeah. but you know, I prefer a 308. Yeah, but if somebody knows the ballistics, knows what their gun is capable of, yeah. knows what they're capable of, that's that's a big part of it, right? And yeah. they're not taking 700 yard shots with it. Yeah, at an elk. Yep. You know, a deer at 500, maybe. Yeah. An elk, no. Yeah. Now, like last year, when I was planning my trip, I had to make a decision. Okay, which which gun am I going to use? The 308, which I use for deer, and I've been shooting that gun for over 20 years, and I'm really proficient with it. It's nice and light. Mm -hmm. It's a Browning X-Bolt uh, Micro, so it's really light. Or... Do I bring my seven mil rem mag, mm -hmm. which honestly is a better round for elk? Sure, it's going to shoot further. It's going to hit harder, mm -hmm. but the damn gun weighs like freaking eight pounds, right. and I didn't want to be lugging that up and down the mountain. So that you know that kind of plays into it too. So yep. yeah, for me, the three hundred eight was the better choice, right? Because you know what, when you, when you're doing this, whether it's a gun or oh, arrows right. or whatever, you, you just you try to check off as many boxes as possible you've got the ideal situation and you just start checking off boxes and you know whatever checks off the most boxes and that that's, that's what i go with yeah mm -hmm. so well, that's like my three way everybody laughs at me i shoot a, on a ruger american yeah compact okay the thing weighs like two and a half pounds yeah kicks yeah. like a son of a bitch <laughs> my wife's six and a half is a savage yeah and it's the long barrel okay and that's really heavy yeah it's nice and tame, though. Yeah. You don't even know what's going on. But that's, she sits on a tree, slamming her blind. Yeah. I'm not worried about recoil. Yep. So, why not? Yeah. And she's not taking 300-yard shots with it. They're, you know, 25, 30 yards. Yeah, I was going to say, most. it's well under 100. Yeah. Yeah, so. So, but that's the thing. So, uh, on that note, we, we wanted to dive into it. We wanted to see what it was all about after I saw the clip. We get it. Should they have done a little bit more due diligence and a little more research? Probably. Yeah. But do I disagree completely with them? No. It's got to be the right person, the right situation, yeah. the right round. Yes. All that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, but I, I didn't watch the whole... Once I got past the six and a half, I stopped watching. So yeah, I didn't want to get... Because I figured <laughs> there would be something else and then I'd have to be taking yeah. notes. Yeah, get uh, twisted. Yeah, so... Yeah. But uh, we're going to call it a night. I believe. Yeah, I guess so. It's... Yeah. About an hour. Yeah, more than an hour. So you got us for a little extra. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah. And I, you know, I'd like to hear your thoughts. You know, yes, send definitely. us a message. What you know? What's your th if you shoot a six five? Right. Or a rum. Or a rum. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, if you go out west, or what? What's your mm -hmm. what's your choice? Yep. And Hit us up. why you do or why you don't shoot a particular round? Right. You know. Yep. So so easy as well. Podcast podcast at Gmail. Yep. Over on YouTube, you can literally comment right on the podcast, right on the episode. Same thing on Podbean. Spotify, unfortunately, you can listen to it. I don't think you can leave comments on Spotify. I don't believe so. But just shoot us an email. Find us on Facebook, Huntcast, Podcast, or TikTok. Or not. Listen to me. Tyler's got to listen on TikTok. <laughs> Instagram. And we will be happy to answer whatever we can. Yeah. We also did put up, well, I put up a video. The... Doug was kind of eating. I got here kind of early tonight. So you can head over. I did a breakdown on my Elite Era. So that's on our YouTube channel currently. But yeah, 
Yeah. Reach out and let us know. Up, so. Yeah, it's already up. Yeah. It looks like somebody already looked at it. Watch yeah. it. Okay. So we'll be back next week. Our goal is, is to have Randy Cheyenne. Okay. From cool. the outfitters that were with us at Archery Fest. Yeah. But I'm waiting to hear 100% back that he can be there. If not, we will have something fun and interesting to talk about. Yeah. In the meantime, like I said, shoot us an email. Want to hear about something, talk about something. We'll probably do some sort of product next week. I don't know what product we're going to do. Yeah, we do. should. Yeah. And let us know what you're doing to get ready for the season. We're yeah. going to go into some of that too. Yeah, it's coming. So in the meantime, check us out next week. Huntcast podcast. We appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon. Yep. See ya.